Don't ask me why I'm filming this or what I'm planning to do with this or if I'm following a script or some sort of plan or timeline. I'm not. I'm just shooting from the hip and this stuff is going to come out raw out of my brain. But um, I shot that video from the Santa Fe Depot down in Fullerton, uh, California yesterday in the middle of the rain. Uh, that was my playground growing up in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s. I literally was pretty much down there either every day or every night. And uh, uh, Santa Fe runs in my blood. Santa Fe runs in my family's blood. Uh, apparently, my grandfather, uh, back during World War II and the Korean War, and, and a bunch of other of his, uh, of other people from the same town in Mexico, uh, they came up during the war movement and... Uh, America was short of manpower, sending all their men overseas, and my father worked for the railroads. Basic track gang, but my grandfather, I should say. I got it. Um, you name it. Um, models, uh, paper, um, photographs, tools, you name it. Everything Santa Fe, I pretty much bleed and will ooze out. Um, but I'm down at the station yesterday, and they brought back so many memories, so much nostalgia. Now, where I live, I live literally in between Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm. We had Movie Land Wax Museum just slightly up the road also. I'm right in the middle. P picture a square. Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Movie Land Wax Museum, uh, Fullerton Station, and I live right here. When I lived with my mom and dad when I was younger, it's just right over here. So while the whole world is going to Disneyland or Knott's, and I believe my brother and, and, and the twins and his wife are at Knott's as we speak, this was my amusement park, was Fullerton Station. Um, so I'm shooting this video. I have a whole bunch of photographs as I'm cleaning out my shop here. I'm pretty much done building for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I have to shift gears, get into my eBay mode and start selling a whole bunch of models I have and built up stuff. Uh, I'm going to start that phase of my business again. But as I'm cleaning up my workbench, I came across a whole bunch of photographs I took way back in the day. And I'm going to, it's going to be my honor to share with you guys, whoever happens to be watching. I don't have a clue, but, um. My uh, days growing up in the middle of Santa Fe country out here on the West Coast. So how am I going to shoot this? I don't have a clue. <laughs> I tried to take pictures of the pictures and post them up on, uh, on my laptop here, but it was giving me a lot of problems. So I'm just going to do it old fashioned way. And I had no problem with that. Um, this happened to have handy, otherwise all my stuff is upstairs, everything on the Santa Fe you can even think of. Um, they should be calling me Mr. Santa Fe instead of Mr. Rivets. But we're going to use uh, the Santa Fe actual car location identity codes. In this particular case, this is from 1988, June of 88, but it is of our subject area, the Fullerton and Santa, Santa Ana section of the California Division. And we're going to go to page, well, we were going to go to page, let's see, what was it right there? And as I show you some photographs from my youth, we were going to refer to this guy here. But I quickly noticed that even in terms of 1988, the section we're going to cover, the way they have it drawn out here, 
it's already been super out of date. Most of this trackage and uh, branch lines and sightings and stuff were already torn out by 1988. So this is already outdated, but just to give you a lay of the land, you're looking at downtown Fullerton. The depot is right here. Right about, no, I take it back. Depot's right here. Depot's right here. And um, as you head eastward, the line, it's a double track main line. A portion of the line branches off to the south along the coast down towards San Diego and National City. And the Tijuana Mexico border is just a little bit after that. But at one point, way in the beginning of the Santa Fe's history, National City down in San Diego was Santa Fe headquarters. So this was an important, uh, you know, branch line. Well, I'll call it branch line. This was an important section of track that veered off the main line and headed down to San Diego. That's how you got to Santa Fe headquarters way back when. We're talking 1800s, 1880s, 1890s, 1910s. The two main lines head out towards east, towards Chicago, and then all points east from there. And, of course, your two main lines that head west, continue to head west, will terminate in downtown Los Angeles. Um, and Fullerton pretty much is about... 30 to 40 miles east of Los Angeles and about another 20, 25 miles before you get to Riverside and Corona out this way, which is where I was born. But um, this, is, this was my playground. This was my playground for many, many years. This is a complicated, uh, out of date, even for 1998. So we'll just basically... We'll point out points of interest this way. So there's your branch line down to San Diego. There's two main lines heading back east. Your two main lines heading west towards downtown Los Angeles. North, we're facing north, south, and your station is right there. So we'll use this as a point of reference. Uh, this may be a two-parter or three-parter. I'm just having fun. But I'm going to share with you guys some interesting photographs that uh, no longer exist and these were photographs taken by me personally of scenes that no longer exist, equipment that no longer exists, trackage that no longer exists, and all the infrastructure along the line that no longer exists. And we'll start off with our main photograph here. Incidentally, if you guys are wondering why I played that song right there, that song by ZZ Top off of their, uh, I forgot what album. It's the same album that has um, LaGrange on it. Uh, that song, uh, uh, did did you all know that uh, ZZ Top played a, made a song about the Santa Fe Railroad? Moving on down the line, it's about the Santa Fe. If you heard the words there in the beginning, um, it just goes to show you that God loves three things. God loves um, the Santa Fe, ZZ Top, and the New York Yankees. Anyways, let's get to this real quick. Now, right here, the point we're going to be covering, the, the section of the Fullerton Depot is not quite a mile wide, at least the points where I explored, maybe about three quarters of a mile wide. So in this particular photographs, we're going to be standing right about here. So about from here to here is about three quarters of a mile, maybe slightly under a mile. We'll be standing here facing this way. Now, once upon a time, you found these all over the Southwest. Southern Pacific had them also. And up until recently, they started knocking them down here on both the Santa Fe and the Southern Pacific. And that's your American Signal cantilever signal tower. In this particular case, it's for three tracks. What well, looks like one, two, three, four tracks heading into down. The station is way down there where that signal bridge is. You can barely make out a signal bridge, and the station would be right over here. There's a big factory that stood here for years, a big plant that used to make the Donald Duck fruit juices for kids that kids for eons have been enjoying. I'm sure they still produce them, I guess. I'm assuming 
They're just not made in Fullerton, California anymore. Probably made out in Pakistan or China or something like that. But this was an interesting spot. This is an interesting photograph. On this particular day here, I got let out of work early because we had a massive earthquake here in Southern California. It's known as the Whittier earthquake, 1988-89, right about there. So they let us loose. I had nothing to do. I went down to the station with my 35 millimeter Pentrax camera and I started taking pictures of what I could. But just like yesterday when I was at the depot and it was raining, uh, the line had been shut down. And the few trains that were caught on the line were traveling at a super, super reduced, restricted speed because all the signals were out. So the idea, you can see a green light there, but the idea is that they're able to stop on a dime, hopefully, if the track is misaligned or they come up on a red signal. So on this particular day, because of the earthquake, everything was shut down. But there were some freight trains that went through and some passenger trains, and we caught them. So you, this particular section of track, this is something you do not see anymore out here on the west. This is something you do not see anymore in Fullerton is the cabooses that they would line up here on these tracks. The Downo Duck fruit juice plant. This is Highland Avenue, Highland Street. Now it goes under the railroad. Back then it used to go over with just a two-lane blacktop road. Here's all the infrastructure that we're going to cover in photographs right now. I'll show you that Santa Fe had along the tracks. Santa Fe had a team track in here. And with that team track, they had a uh, scale house, a uh, loading dock, uh, little, little cute railroad buildings made out of wood from the steam era days that you don't see anymore. And you could, we still have the pole line that runs along the entire section of Santa Fe track. And we're talking all along from the coast to Chicago. It's pretty much all gone now. It's all um, radio signals and internet and GPS and stuff. So that pole line is still there. And if you guys are hardcore railroad fans, you know what a railroad pole line is. This is where they would send their telegraphs and their signals uh, to turn or to correctly align trackage, to throw switches throw the signals from red to green, indicating what block is open, what block is restricted, what block is a no-go. So um, that pole line is steep, still there. If I were to stand in this exact section today, all this is gone. All these trees are gone. All this track is gone. This is gone. The palm tree is gone. Everything is gone, even that signal bridge. You now got brand new condominiums or high-rise housing on this side. The park, all these trees have been uh, knocked down. The Park has cleaned up, so to speak, all their grassy areas and their baseball field is actually right about here. And all this over here is literally gone. It's just two main lines on pink ballast, the typical pink Santa Fe ballast. And, um, and you got some factory over here. So this scene here is no longer available and it's pretty much gone, gone forever. And I was able to capture it here on film way back in 1988-89, somewhere around there. Uh, now I tried to upload these on, onto my laptop. It was creating a lot of problems for me. It's um, I won't get into the details because it involves some work-related issues. But I'll kind of sh I'll shoot this video like a film strip presentation and we'll just put the photographs here by the way anyone's interested in using any of these photographs please feel free uh, you don't have to contact me or anything just if you could throw me some credit throw me a bone and mention me in my youtube channel so i can get some more subscribers that'd be fantastic but check it out we're still face this we have moved down the track a little bit maybe about 200 feet So we were here when we shot that first photograph facing this way. Now we're standing right about here facing northbound. We're actually facing the Donald Duck Juice plant that used to be out there. So 
So this was a great spot once upon a time if you wanted to capture pictures or see Santa Fe cabooses. They would, I believe at one time we had up to four and at one time five Santa Fe cabooses stationed out of here. Both the CE tall cupola type and this more bay window type or center cupola. I think these were built by International Car and Foundry. And the other ones were built in Santa Fe's own shops. Or they were built by American Car and Foundry. Something like that. But the brand new Santa Fe War Barn bonnet started to come onto the scene. You could tell this is before 1992. Because in 1992 what Santa Fe did, including on all their brand new war bonnets and blue and yellow freight units. Because America was had entered the first Gulf War against Iraq. What Santa Fe did is they equipped all their locomotives with an American flag sticker right here in the front. So this photograph is definitely pre-1992. Like I said, taken about 1988 or 89. And that's right about the time that uh, the war bonnets started coming in. The GE Dash 8s. Dash 9s hadn't come on board yet, but they were the Dash 8s in both the four-wheel trucks and the six-wheel truck configuration. And they were supposed to pull all the hot shot priority intermodal traffic, including the UPS train. And that's what they did. But it wound up becoming a mishmash of silver and red and blue and yellow freight units mixed in all consists. It was the most unusual, colorful period of the Santa Fe, if you ask me, that we ever witnessed. And it's something I modeled there and at that time also, a mix of blue and yellow and silver and red war bonnet. But uh, here is a westbound, here is a westbound Santa Fe hotshot train because these units were put on their hotshot intermodal trains at first. So it's a hotshot intermodal heading west towards downtown Los Angeles after coming across the country all the way from Chicago. And... Had she been coming from San Diego, she would have been on this track right here. So, um, and in the background, like I said, is a Donald Duck uh, juice plant. And I think once upon a time, they had a big sign here with Donald Duck's picture on it, all the goofy characters from Disneyland. But um, over the time, the company got sold, and they could make the juice but not advertise it was part of Disneyland and all sorts of legal mumbo-jumbo that only lawyers can cook up. Now, this particular caboose here, apparently, uh, if I recall correctly, if you own some sort of private railroad equipment, you could rent space on, some, on a section of siding along the main line here in Fullerton. Once again, you could see the inner workings of the Donald Duck plant in the background. These are cooling towers and where they stack their pallets and stuff. This Santa Fe caboose here had all its windows plated over, but painted in black. But those are steel plates over the windows. And it just sat there and sat there for years and years till the red paint faded away to pink. But, um, and she was backed up against, you can see it here, the team track, and this is the loading dock for the team track, which was basically made out of railroad ties with dirt and gravel on top pressed down, pressed into the creosote of the railroad ties, kind of made for a firm footing. And there you can see two security lights. This is way before cameras, security cameras now that are everywhere, but I guarantee you, these are security lights, not cameras, because we're talking about 1988, 1989. Let's go to the second picture. Also in the same general area. I spoke that there was four cabooses out there. I think I have photographs for about three. At one time, it went up to five cabooses because the Fullerton local, which were two Santa Fe, I think they were Jeep 35s. Uh, which switches out all the local branch lines, all the industry in the evenings. Uh, for a while there, they tacked on a caboose for whatever reason. 
that was short lived after about a year they took the caboose off but here's another picture of another Santa Fe caboose parked for storage along those tracks this is right next to that park there's those trees I mentioned earlier the baseball field is just behind this caboose with parking right up against the fence and that's where I would park on a lazy summer afternoon park my car or my truck and just open the windows and just take a long nap as the noise from the Santa Fe main line and this is a busy busy line non to this day it's a busy line and just the noise of the locomotives and the clickety clack of the wheels and, and the smell of diesel exhaust would just rock me slowly into a deep deep comfortable sleep that only mama could replicate back when I was in the womb and that's what the railroad does or did for me anyways back in my youth so let's go back to another picture here trying to see if I have more caboose pictures which I do not also along those um those storage tracks once again you can see the Donald Duck uh, the cooling towers are behind this boxcar but you can see the pallets and all the stuff of their loading docks here. Keep in mind, all that is gone now. It's all high-rise, expensive condos. But this is um, this is a 50-foot Pullman standard, typical single-door boxcar from the 50s, probably the 60s. Uh, you can still see the original Santa Fe uh, shock. It would have a big white circular thing here. It's probably painted originally brown, and um, they pulled it off for maintenance away service, painted it silver, renumbered it, and once in a while, I never saw it used, and I never saw it moved, and um, but it sat there. The station is over here on this side. It's over here on this side. It sat there used for many, 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 many years. So it got pulled and probably scrapped. Hopefully donated it to the Paris Trolley Museum. But more than likely this got just down the road a little bit. Along the 91 freeway there's a big metal recycling place. And the railroad tends to, the railroad has a bunch of sidings in there. And they tend to just pull equipment off the line with a switcher, wheel it into the recycling plant, park it on one of those siding tracks, and leave it there for, you know, for sale and recycling into, you know, soda cans or whatever the world they do with that. So this one pretty much, I guarantee, wound up being uh, soda cans or hubcaps or something. This is an interesting car. This is an this was formerly either a mechanical reefer or a nice bunker reefer. I never climbed on top of her to see that. I don't think the ladder yeah, she still had the ladders. I kind of respected the equipment back then, even though I was young. I should have climbed on top to see if it was a former ice bunker reefer. But for sure it was a mechanical reefer. You have your mechanical um, your enclosure here where the diesel motor would sit. You have your plug door, insulated uh, door. The whole car would be insulated, floor, roof, everything. Uh, it, in order to, where ice bunker reefers had a big fan that would turn slowly as the wheels of the box car or the reefer car moved down the tracks, mechanical reefers didn't have that feature. Mechanical reefers, it's like a refrigerator or a freezer in your house. And where they got their power is they ran off of diesel fuel, and you would see the diesel fuel tanks underneath the car. This is a 50-footer. Um, also probably was originally painted. This one, no, this one was originally painted, would have been painted orange with black ends and a black roof. Probably would say Santa Fe all the way or Route of the Super Chief or something like that. So it was pulled for maintenance away service, re-lettered, repainted, and um, give it new trucks. 
and it sat there for many, many years before it got shoved into that recycling plant and turned into whatever they turn scrap metal into nowadays. Uh, let's see what else we got for you. Okay, these pictures are cool. This was taken many years later, but this, the area pretty much still is the same with the only feature that all the equipment is gone. That box car, those box cars we showed you, the cabooses. Uh, you're still facing eastward. The station is way down there. This picture is probably taken in the mid 90s. They have, instead of that signal bridge, now they have an actual pedestrian walkway going across. And the signal bridges got pushed out further east and further west. The Donald Duck juice plant is still there, but by this time, I believe she's just about to be shut down and abandoned. She's still putting out smoke from her cooling towers here, but um, her days are numbered uh, very fast. The pole line is still there, but that is those days are being num Actually, they were cut right about here. They ended, and they started again way back on the other side there, but uh, all that is winding down as you can see the equipment the spare cabooses and boxcars are gone and all that left all that is left is the trackage but that is soon to be gone as well so we are now pretty much standing right about here we're standing right about here still facing eastward and that pedestrian bridge and this depot are kind of like right here the park and all that good stuff is behind us. And the juice plant was, would have been right about here. This tape is almost done. Join me for part two. I will be right back. Why don't you guys go take a break. Go have a hamburger. Have a nice long coffee break. We'll meet back here. Part two.